Hi, Doug here. So this one's probably more for the tech nerds in the group. I just finished writing code to read the data from the robot. Uh, why do I need to do that? Well, there's some interesting things I want to do with this robot. One of them is welding. So let's say the robot is in this position and I want to finish the weld here. I need to know these two positions in space, in X, Y, and Z, so I can then have the software weave the robot to do a proper weld and speed control. Well, I need to read where that position is. And that's where it gets complicated because the robot can't just give you that data easily. So, uh, I'll walk you through the process of what I do. So first thing I did is I made a program on the robot. Label one here means it's just a loop. It's just gonna be going through a loop. You can see, when we get down to the bottom here, uh, it jumps back to label 100. So it's just looping through this series of commands. So it's all repetitive, so we'll just do the first one here. So PR3 is position register three. We wanna store the current position of the linear, which is the Cartesian coordinates, to that position three. So all I was just saying is take wherever you currently are and just store it into this register. So I have here, if R14, what that is register 14. And I'm using register 14, if we go to data here, register 14 is the send request. So the software will send a number. So first thing it's gonna do is gonna start up the program and it's currently in position one. It's gonna start the call to the robot. Uh, the robot will acknowledge and say, yes, I'm ready. And it's going to uh, send a request for X. So it'll send that off and it'll get, um, the robot will change that number to number one. So that will be the number one. So if that variable changes to one, it's gonna to jump to label one. So I'm gonna go down to label one here. Here's label one. So when it gets to label one, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take register position number 10. So I'm using number 10 here as the position registers to store X, Y, Z in rotation. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that X value, I'm writing position register three, which is the one we just wrote above of where it's stored, comma one, which is the X value. So I'm taking where it currently is in X that was stored previously, uh, the store position, and I'm writing that to register value 10. Now, I wanna send that character or that value from register 10, which is position X, I wanna send that out to serial port. When it says send, what it does is it'll send a uh, 0x50 to the, um, or 0x05 to the software, which will say the robot is requesting to send information to my computer. So then I will acknowledge that by sending an acknowledge response 0x06 saying, yep, go ahead and send it. And then here's the values it sends. So 85 means it's sending a uh, register value. Three means it's got three bytes of data. Here's those three bytes of data that are sent. I then uh, compile that data and I store it in variable. So X position is now negative 341. And then I start that process all over again. I now send it, um, I reset, it responds back with negative 124, which is 0x84, I believe, which says I'm done communicating with you. And then, um, oh yeah, there's x84. And then I get ready to send it again, and I this time ask for the y, and then the z. And it's just a repetitive system in here. So if it's one, if it's two, if it's three, if it's four, and it keeps going. So it sends the X, then the Y, then the Z, then the rotation value. Once it finishes going through all those different cycles at the bottom down here, it'll say all done. And here is the X value, the Y value, the Z value, and the R value. So it took 506 milliseconds to complete that entire cycle. So half a second to read all that data. And then down here, it says the robot ended the communications. So if I go to the position registers here, you see our position here is negative 85, our Y is six, our Z is 114, our rotation is two. And as you can see here, um, where it says rotation is two and so forth, it rounds off those decimal places because the way the robot works, it can't send decimal places. So if I wanna send 2.648, I need to multiply that times a thousand to shift it over. And then when it goes into the software, I need to divide by a thousand to shift it back over and get that decimal value. I'm not that concerned about that much accuracy, um, one tenth of a millimeter at this point, but if I have to, I will. But that way this will work now is I'll set the robot up and in the software will be three buttons. First bu button will be position one. So I will actually drive the robot to the first position of the weld. And then on the software, I'll say record position one. I'll then move the robot down to the end of the weld and I'll say record position two. At that point, I turn the welder on and then I'll hit go or weld. And what the software will do is it'll calculate between A and B, the weave pattern in three dimensional space, and it'll feed those coordinates in real time to the robot and turn on the output for the welder. It'll do its welding and then it'll finish. I know it's really complicated for just doing that, but what's funny is the FANUC robot has welding built into it. It's called the weave function. And you'd be surprised, that's I think $3,000. And they also have to do a reburn of the um, 
firmware, which is send the whole controller off the fan. I can imagine what shipping costs for that just to do the weave. So I'm trying to do that all myself without spending all that money, which is kind of cool. So if you stayed through all of this, you like the technical bits. So I appreciate you guys hanging out for that. Any questions, let me know. And uh, thanks for checking it out. You guys have a good one.